Well, it's season number five, and my biggest fear for one of these series has happened. We haven't made a signing yet. We're at the 16th of August, and we just made, like, little crappy free signings, which I might even, like, I'm going to trial it for another couple of seasons. If he continues to just make signings like this without actually bringing in first teamers, I might just take him off that, and then just, like, you just focus on first team, to be honest, because, I mean, on the outs, we obviously haven't had any. We've only had... Uh, Liam Becker leave and a couple of free transfers and of course Junior Furpo that was a deal that was done last year but it's not like we don't need improving and it's not like we don't have the money we got 73 million pound and we're not making any moves we got a decent wage budget too I'm a little bit confused I mean if we take a look at our ability yeah a lot of our players are, are great it's not like this is a Champions League team though we need to build on this team now and take us from that outer sixth place around that area into Champions League football. That's that's progression. And right now, we're not getting that. Now, we've just played our first game of the season. Unfortunately, we lost it 1-0. But we had four players suspended. Like, I don't think I've ever seen that many players suspended on the first game of the season. Richarlison scored there uh, from a nod down from a corner. We didn't play that well, though. We only had 12 shots. They had 25. So, a lot of shots coming at us. We are still sticking with, at the minute... Uh, this like five at the back with five up front type of style of formation and Jack because it was successful last year So we might as well try it again a good game for Cuenca, Meslier and Almeida But the rest of the guys really let us down, but yeah weird one so many suspensions We even got a couple of more suspended for the next game as well including Calvin Phillips and Dominic Yankov Right, we're on deadline day. Yeah, there's not a lot of happening in, in this summer. We've played another two games. One was against Crystal Palace. A 95th minute equaliser from Abira Eze. Really frustrating. We actually took the lead from being 2-1 down. Everything happened, by the way, from the 75th minute. If you got to the 70th minute and it's near no, you're going, this is a boring game. I, I should have just stayed at home. And then... By the 95th minute, it's 3 all. So it was a Saturday game, 3 o'clock. You can think, oh, God, what's better to do? Okay, the away game, though, that we played against Norwich was a lot more promising. We managed to win that one 3-1. Eddie and Ketia scored in the 74th minute for them, but uh, we were already 2-0 up, and we finished them off with a Rafinha 89th minute. So... I bring you back here because some things are happening in the transfer market. We've had a bid from Kasper Kozlowski rejected for £20 million. Uh, we even tried to part exchange him for, for another player that they're interested in. And we've made a massive bid for a regen called Valentin Romero from Atletico Madrid. £25 million. Uh, it looks like he has been transfer listed. So hopefully we can get that deal over the line. But other than that, hardly anything. No, all free transfers, that all crap little sign-ins that nobody really cares about. Even on the outs, exactly the same. And the Valentin Romero deal is done. £25 million. So we have spent quite a lot of money. Now he does have some very likeable attributes, but there are obviously some worrying uh, stuff too. I mean, he's in 20, so we've got to give him a little bit of slack, but technically he looks great down the bottom, that passing and technique, 17 and 16, obviously with his good vision, work rate, flair and determination, but other than that, like, very underwhelming, I think is the thing, and he's playing in the shadow strike role, or obviously he plays centre attack in midfielder, which is the reason why he has been bought, and I don't know whether, I mean, he has great potential, I guess, we need to look at that. His value's decent, He's not too much on the wage budget, but £25 million? I don't think I want to pay £25 million for this player. I think £15 million tops. But let me know down in the comments. What would you value this player? Because in my opinion, £15 million would be enough. He has great passing and vision. Other than that, as like a passer of the boy, we, we're using shadow strikers. He's not that good at being a shadow striker. So yeah, I don't know what Ralph Randick's seen there. Before we close out this transfer window, though, today's video is sponsored by Spitch. Yeah, Spitch are the fantasy football in that that I absolutely adore for so many reasons, including, of course, the fact that you don't have a limited amount of transfers every single time. I think that's the best thing about it. Every single week, you can have a different team to put up against. And by a week-by-week -week basis, you can actually win prizes. Now, Spitch is available in loads of different countries, including the UK, Germany, and Austria. 
and it will be available in more countries in the future too down the line so be patient and you can finally get your hands on spit so once you do as long as you're 18 years of age or above and you take a little picture of your identification for verification purposes then you can have a chance to download spit free of charge and join my community league now there is a top of the, at the top of the description there's two different links the first one is to join spit and once you do that you're obviously helping support me as a content creator and if you want to add to your fun then you can join the community league on the the second link the second link will put you directly in that link uh, in that league with about 60 of us in there and we're having so much fun battling it out every single week i used to be really good at this i absolutely suck now time and time again i've put my trust in manchester united players and they've really let me down dad on the other hand he's doing a little bit better than me and he's chasing a guy at the top so if you want to see how he does or try and beat him then, they, then you know what to do down in the description download spitch thank you very much for everybody who has obviously downloaded it so far, and thank you very much to Spitch for sponsoring today's video. Well, the transfer window closes, and we've got £49 million left in the transfer budget with a very hefty wage budget too. Uh, and I don't know why we're offering for players like Kasper Kozlowski if we're never actually going to go and try and get another centre midfielder, but I guess maybe try getting him to play in the centre attacking midfielder role, which... I don't know. Uh, just a little bit underwhelmed by that transfer window, to be fair. Just one sign of £25 million. A few going out, and I just... Yeah, I think we could just do better with that, really. We could really do better than that. So, I mean, we have been given our Europa League group. We've got Benfica, Celtic, and Montpellier. We should be going through that, I'd say, possibly in second place in behind Benfica, depending on how well their players have developed. Uh, but other than that, League form, I want to be where we were roughly last season. I want to be looking at that sort of like from fourth down to eighth position, trying to get some European football. And if we do overachieve, perfect, get ourselves into the top four. But with the signings that he's made, I think we've got to be realistic. So we are going to rock the same tactic for the next part of the season. However, I have slightly changed it. You might see an advanced playmaker is going to play instead of three Shadow Strikers and on support mode, so it would drop in the hole a little bit more than what the Shadow Strikers do. And you've seen from the goals that we have highlighted in the past, just because they're in the Shadow Striker role doesn't mean they don't track back. They do tend to be acting like centre midfielders on defence, but they are so much further forward when you are on the attack. But the advanced playmaker will look, look to drop back into holes when our players are running with the ball instead of the shadow strikers looking to go wide. That's my thinking with that. So that's why the central guy is the advanced playmaker on support role, trying to bring in uh, a little bit of a bridge between the midfield and the attack. Right then, let's simulate this season to January and I'll bring you back when something interesting happens. Right then, it's the 12th of January. We are rejecting some bids left, right and centre here. A lot for Caligari, uh, up to £32 million for the young fullback for us, but he's kind of like the only right back that we got, which is why I don't understand why we're not spending the millions and millions of pounds that we have. Uh, just sat in the trance budget. Giannis Antiste as well as a backup striker. Uh, we're not really using him that much. We've rejected £10 million there. We have made some kind of signings though and that is because we welcome a brand new striker in Lorenzo Colombo. So the Italian, so he is kind of a wonder kid to be fair I guess because he's I think he's like 20 at the start of the game from AC Milan. He's developed quite well and he hasn't actually played that many games for AC Milan starting the game like he's had seven starts seven, 21 appearances off the bench and yet he still scored some goals so it's very promising and I actually quite like the look of him especially his physicals are fantastic okay off the ball uh, and of course that finishing of 16. Composure of 14 could be a little bit better but I'm guessing as Rafinha's sort of substitute he would be good he would be good uh, bringing him off the bench and that's what we're spending our money on there 16.75 million pound in total so yeah not bad but we are rejecting like I say a lot of bids coming in schedule wise if we take a look we've had some bad patches which means we are currently in 13th place. But I will highlight that a little bit more. But, I mean, losses against Wolves and Newcastle back-to-back. -back, Man City as well in the Premier League. Some bad losses recently, but we're coming up against all the hard teams all at once. We can't get any momentum. We had a bad spell there. We drew three games in a row. Uh, and even in... The Europa League, we've drawn and lost a game, but thankfully Benfica have lost two games, one against us, uh, which means we actually qualify as top of this group, which 
I'm actually quite shocked with. A big win there against Celtic, 6-0 against our British, um, bit, bit of a British derby there. So, I don't know. It seems like it's a really bad season at the minute. 13th place, we need to rescue that. On the grand scheme of things, it was only 10 points behind Spurs, which if you put on a good run, it's, it's quite easy to, to obtain back. We just need to put on that run. Well, the transfer window has closed, but let me introduce you to a brand new centre-back that Ralph Rangnick has signed in, Kaiki. So we've already had Renan. Now we've got Kaiki. He likes these Brazilian centre-backs, doesn't he? Uh, only six foot, which is my only bit of a worrying thing, but he has 15 jump reach, so I guess I'll let him off for that. Uh, he's not actually a bad defender, just a lot of 14s and 13s instead of those 15s and 16s, which you'd want to see, but he does have a little bit of potential, so maybe if we play him quite a lot, then we'll see that added on. Uh, we have, of course, bought him from Santos for £13 million. He played 53 games last season, started every single one, and had an average rating of 7.25. So you can see why Ralph Rangnick has gone for him, and for only £13 million, I think, yeah, that's not bad. That's what I want to see for around about that, that price. That's, that's what I think is good. I think what we paid for Romero should be roughly what we paid for Kaiki. Uh, on the outs, nothing ever since we've seen in the previous transfer window, it's just a couple of these crappy signings. Uh, there are, if I take a look at here, a lot of offers coming back. And uh, Thor, Theo, who we've just who we signed last January, I think, is going to be leaving us at the end of the season for £18.75 million to Valencia. Uh, so we still got him for now, but he will be leaving in the future. Of course, he obviously, I think Kaiki then, once he had been brought in, he's surplus. Uh, to requirements and yeah he's happy to let him go so just on this halfway stage Lorenzo Luca has scored 15 goals with 10 assists Rafinha's got 12 playing up front with him uh, Kubo's doing well Almeida's doing okay Rafinha's playing quite well off the bench that's not bad at all however he isn't actually registered right now which may be a bad decision from my end uh, I actually registered Antiste because I thought he would be a better option but there we go what do I know Valentin Romero he's only done a 6.92 he's Started 13, 12 off the bench, two goals and six assists. It's not bad. Uh, I just, again, I think we're just really struggling fullback wise. We've only got one out and out fullback on the right hand side. We can play Simakan or Shackleton there. But on the left, it's like this it's Conte's manager of England. It's uh, Soranola or it's hardly anybody. And that's our problem. Uh, we've got Renan who can play there, but not very well. And of course, we trained Fran Beltran there. And he's had some big offers coming in for him too. Other than that, yeah, it's nobody. In the last couple of games, we've actually done quite well. We've beaten Reading, Newcastle and Bristol City in three out of the four games. We lost to Manchester United there in the Premier League. So we've we've not done too bad there. We are out of the semi-final of the Carabao Cup again. We've managed to get the semi-final every time. Just annoying, we keep getting knocked out. So 11th place is where we're sat right now. Let's simulate to the end of the season. Okay, we have pulled it back slightly, but we're still two points out of the European spots in eighth place. 58 points in total. Everton managed to get 60 yeah, Newcastle done quite well as well with 73 points. They finished there in fifth place above Manchester United, so not too great. Tottenham all the way down in 13th, though, is even worse. And there are some big names going down, including Brighton. Well, Brighton, Reading, and Bristol City obviously have just come up. But Brighton going down, there are some great players at Brighton that I think we could sign should we still have money at the end of this season, which I think we should. Chelsea have won the league, though, which is... Uh, the first time they've done that since the second season, I think now. So Lorenzo Luca up there with the highest average rain, but nowhere near the most goals. And considering Gabriel Martinelli's up there with 18, I'm disappointed. Mohamed Salah the girl, got 26. Um, so very, very good season for Liverpool's Mohamed Salah, but they only finished in third in behind Manchester City. Competitions then. Of course, we had the Europa League. We finished top of our group. We were knocked out in the second round by Sevilla. Yeah, not great. In the away leg, we lost 1-0. Um, we drew one all, and N Naziri scored in both legs, uh, which has knocked us out. So that's kind of annoying, really. And if you take a look at the final, uh, Monaco were, uh, lost against Inter Milan 3-0. So there were some big names in Europa League, to be fair. But I would expect us to go a little bit further than that. Sevilla's a great team, don't get me wrong. Uh, I would expect us to go a little bit further than that. Is it because the tactics to attack him? I don't know, because it was very successful last season. We did quite well with it. Yeah, it's one of those things, I guess. Transfers then. Of course, we got a couple 
oh, well, we've got this man on the out, Fior on the out, but we've been given 35 million pound or 106,000, well, 106,000 pound in the uh, wage budget for next season. Don't know whether that's like secure and that's it. I don't know whether we'll be given more or not. We'll have to find out in the next episode tomorrow. In the goals tally though, well, let's take a look because Lorenzo Luca is a poor season in all counts. 24 goals, 14 assists, 18 goals from Rafinha, 10 from Kubo, 10 for Jack Harrison, 11 for Kubo, 10 for Jack Harrison, and 10 Beltran got assist wise. Other than that, it's only him and Luca who got double figures for assists, which is quite poor. Consider as well the amount of good average ratings that we had. Goals just didn't come that our way. And look at that tactic. We're playing so aggressive. So I don't know. I don't know. I want to know your thoughts down in the comment section. Do you think this is just not, not, a, good, not, a, good, not a good enough tactic anymore? It seemed to work last season. As, as the AI figured us out, I want to know your thoughts. Let me know down in the comment section and I'll see you tomorrow for another episode. If it is out, by the way, it will be on this screen right here.